Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, my name is Chris Lishka. I work for, I'm a software application engineer at Intel Corporation and I work with developers and researchers at uh, Argonne National Lab and other science labs to migrate and optimize science codes. So today I'm gonna to be uh, talking about some uh, work we've been doing with uh, uh, getting uh, Intel VTune Profiler to profile um, machine learning and deep learning workloads. I'll be using TensorFlow just because it's a, a, a nice framework and it has a very good um, uh, profiling system itself. So uh, uh, TensorFlow and TensorBoard are both uh, very popular methods for um, uh, implementing MLDL models and profiling. Um, when you use VTune on an application uh, that you compile yourself, uh, you're running VTune over the application. TensorFlow is implemented as a Python package. So when you use VTune uh, with TensorFlow, you're actually running VTune on the Python interpreter executable. So it's a slightly different way of running. <clears throat> and uh, rather than just seeing your own functions and library functions from your own app, you'll also see uh, uh, Python uh, functions and uh, TensorFlow functions as well. Although uh, generally the, what's taking the most time in an MLDL model is are the kernels that implement the TensorFlow ops. So those will show up uh, as the primary uh, hotspots. Um, TensorFlow does include a compiler which compiles the model's computational graph to TensorFlow ops. TensorFlow ops uh, are run the hardware uh, as part of the Python program and thus are implemented on the hardware itself using kernels from libraries like Eigen or MKL. Um, so uh, the point is TensorBoard and TensorFlow generally profile at the model and the TF ops level. Uh, for some GPUs, there is uh, some hardware profiling that's exposed through TensorBoard, but for CPUs using something like VTune, uh, the Intel VTune profiler can help you get uh, a, a more visibility into the, what's running on the hardware. Um, so uh, one question that arises then is how can we enhance the TensorBoard uh, 2.x profiling with VTune uh, to look and see how the hardware is uh, uh, implementing uh, or running the uh, low level kernels. Um, both VTune and TensorBoard have learning curves. Um, so uh, another question is how can we quickly get going with both and then uh, in order to correlate what we're seeing, can we do both in a single combined run? And so what I'll show you today is um, a simple uh, DL model uh, that comes from one of the TensorFlow Keras uh, tutorials um, and uh, how, uh, to, uh, um, how to add in the profiling for uh, TensorFlow and then how to run VTune over all that so that we can get both the TensorFlow and the V2 profiling together. Um, one note is I like, uh, when I learn something, I like to use, uh, I like to have an example that I can run uh, uh, and play around with. So I, I will be presenting that. Everything I show today uh, in the slides, you can set up yourself and run. All right, so installing and running, um, uh, only a few steps to do this. Uh, so first, uh, I recommend installing VTune uh, Beta 9 uh, from One API. That's, uh, you can install that with a One API Beta 9 installer from software.intel.com. Uh, if you have an account there, it's freely available. If you don't, you can sign up for an account. Um, and the beta nine version, uh, uh, the one API version has a lot of new features uh, and a revamped uh, user interface. So I recommend using that. Um, to install TensorFlow, I'm gonna use Conda because Intel provides prepackaged uh, TensorFlow builds with MKL built in. So normally TensorFlow is built with Eigen. Uh, Intel did some work to optimize TensorFlow on for CPUs uh, using some MKL and MKL DNN uh, uh, libraries um, and uh, calls, and we'll see some of that in action. So uh, I generally install Miniconda. Uh, you can also use Anaconda. So install Miniconda, and then you can run these uh, four commands basically to set up the Conda environment. It's pretty, you just create uh, a new Conda environment with Python 3.7 activate it, install TensorFlow 2.2. When you install, it will show you the packages. If you look for MKL in the package name, that'll show you that you have the MKL package. And then we're also gonna use uh, the profiling plugin for TensorBoard, uh, which is only available on PyPy. So you can pip install that. Um, 
the models that I'm going to be using are a dense net running over the MNIST data set, a very common sort of first model to try out. It's nice because it runs quickly. Um, and also an inference model that uh, uses the safe model from the training. And these are both available in the backup slides. They're about 50 lines each. They include uh, the code to activate uh, TensorBoard profiling. I also have, uh, we'll look at one of these uh, in the next slide, uh, simple scripts to run Btune uh, over a TensorFlow model. Uh, so we have one for training and one for inference. Um, so uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, uh, the Vtune uh, capture uh, on an inference model because uh, generally for Intel CPUs, uh, inferences run. Uh, you can do it over training. Uh, training on uh, Intel CPUs is, is uh, quite useful as well, uh, but we'll be looking at inference today. So step four is to run uh, the training with Python. You just run it straight, uh, the model straight. Step five then is we'll uh, use the script to uh, run VTune over the inference model. And uh, so step four creates a safe model directory that's used in step five by the inference uh, model. And then uh, step five will produce a logs infer directory for the, T, uh, the TensorFlow profiling data and a, a VTune uh, data directory, uh, R number 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 UE, and UE stands for micro, uh, micro architecture exploration, a bit of a mouthful, um, which is the uh, kind of collection we'll be doing today. Um, once you have those, you can copy those over to the, uh, your laptop or computer where you have the VTune GUI. Um, and you can, in the VTune results directory, there's a .vtune file, you can open that directly in the GUI. Um, for TensorBoard, uh, TensorBoard is a separate program uh, and you uh, run that using the uh, inference logs and um, then start up a browser to connect to that uh, TensorBoard server. And I'll be showing briefly some TensorBoard uh, uh, server uh, screens. Uh, so the script actually to run VTune over TensorFlow workload is uh, very short. Um, uh, we define our directory and our command. And then uh, the first thing to do is uh, source in the setvars uh, 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 shell script for one API so that we can get access to VTune. Uh, next, it, we set up uh, conda uh, in the uh, scripts shell uh, with conda.sh and then activate the conda environment that we created in the last slide with Python 3.7 and TensorFlow 2.2 MKL. Um, if you want to uh, tune uh, MKL to the CPUs uh, that you're using, uh, Xeon or Skylake or whatever, um, uh, you can set some uh, environment variables here before we start VTune. And in this case, uh, I, am, I ran this uh, on a NUC with four physical cores, eight logical cores. And um, one thing for certain models, it's more efficient to run on the physical cores. Uh, so uh, I used the information in this uh, article uh, online at software.intel.com and uh, tuned it to use uh, four OMP no threads for the four physical cores and then set the affinity correctly. Um, then all I have to do is uh, change to the directory where the model is, run VTune uh, with a microarchitecture exploration collection. Uh, I've also specified the app working dir here, which is kind of redundant because we've CD'd into the directory, but I'll show you where that comes from in a moment. And then dash dash and the command you want to run, which is up here, Python uh, over our MNIST infer profile script. All right, so let's um, look at uh, what VTune can tell us. Um, this is a short talk, so I don't have, uh, uh, we're, go we're gonna be looking at just one uh, collection, a microarchitecture micro -architecture exploration collection. Um, VTune has two modes of running. There's a GUI and there's a command line. Uh, you can do everything in the GUI, including collection and looking at the results. Um, and generally when you do this, you create a project and then configure different analyses or collections uh, uh, to run in that project. So uh, here to the right, I have an example of the microarchitecture exploration uh, analysis setup. Um, you specify your application and this can be a shell script. In this case, I, uh, this example, I'm, I'm running over the training shell script. Um, you can uh, specify parameters you wanna pass. And then on the right, uh, it gives you a whole bunch of knobs and options to, uh, 
tune how you want to run the data collection, uh, including what you want to uh, include, and then maybe how often you want to sample, stuff like that. Um, one note here is that uh, VTune uh, on Linux does run at a, a fairly deep level, uh, so you need access sometimes uh, to uh, the Linux uh, kernel features, um, and you may need root access to enable those. Um, so when VTune doesn't think you'll have the access to do the collection, it puts up an error message in red, and um, in this case, uh, this, uh, I was taking these screen snapshots in a Linux virtual machine. I wasn't actually doing the collection there. And so it's told me that the virtual machine has, does not have the VPMU uh, feature enabled. Uh, uh, so uh, for other um, air, uh, warnings, it will um, tell you exactly what to do. You make those changes um, and then hit retry. And uh, when everything is good, the red will go away and you can start your collection. Um, one thing I'd like to highlight is uh, down here, this orange circle and arrow, it's uh, a, a highlighting a button that looks like a greater than sign and an underscore sign. If you press this after you set up your collection, it will actually show you the exact um, command line to use. And uh, for any uh, option that is not uh, the default, it will include it in the command line. So essentially what I did here is I set up my collection, uh, pressed the button, copied this out and put it in the script. So that's, even if you're doing command line only, this is a very useful uh, method uh, shortcut to uh, get the proper command line from the get go. Um, the other way to run VTune is with the command line. Uh, so in a lot of uh, science labs, the, the Linux servers that we run on, uh, are either behind a batch system or accessible only via SSH, and it's hard to export the GUI. Um, in this case, it can run in, uh, with a command line. It's very easy to include in scripts, as I showed above. Um, uh, as mentioned, it produces the data directory with a .vtune file that you can then copy over and open uh, uh, on the uh, computer that you have the vtune GUI installed on. If you do use this uh, mode, um, I would recommend that uh, with the, in VTune GUI, go into help about menu and make sure that the GUI's build version and specifically the build number is at least as high as the command line VTune's uh, build number because uh, VTune for the results uh, uses an SQLite database and uh, frequently the schema is updated. So the GUI needs to have the, a, a, a schema that matches what was used for the command line. And then finally, uh, again, another example of the command line, which we uh, saw in the script. Okay, so let's take a look at some actual data. Um, this was from a run over the uh, inference model. Um, and this is uh, microarchitecture exploration. This is one that we use quite a lot. First up, uh, if you look at the top, there are two microarchitecture exploration uh, text boxes. The one on the left indicates the collection type that was done, and the one on the right has, uh, it's hard to see, but there's a drop down arrow. That's actually the view we're looking at. So for a given collection type, you actually have different views that you can use. Uh, the default is named the same as the collection type, but besides that, I could choose a hardware event view or threading efficiency, and these expose more data um, in more ways. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is sort of a, a, a feature that's not that well known in VTune and it's quite useful. So I wanted to highlight it. The first view you'll see in microarchitecture exploration is the summary. At the top is the elapsed time. And you can see this was a short run, 45 seconds. Um, normally this is expanded and you'll see a microarchitecture usage diagram and uh, stats or data. Um, I have it collapsed because we'll see an example of that uh, on the next slide for a particular function. This one on the summary tells you the, uh, what it was for the entire run. So it's a little different than for a particular function. Next up is uh, the effective uh, core utilization, both for physical and logical. Um, and then there's a bar graph of um, how much time was spent using how many different cores simultaneously. Now, one thing to note is that there are some tuning knobs at the bottom here, and I explicitly set up this run to use uh, four OMP threads to match the four logical cores. So really uh, anything that is four cores or higher is uh, good in this case. 
Um, but VTune doesn't know that. VTune just assumes you're running over all logical cores uh, for the CPU. So you can actually slide these knobs over. And I would set this uh, to zero to three cores would be poor, four would be okay. Anything that I got over four uh, cores, uh, I would say is ideal. When you set these knobs, an apply button will show up. You press that and it will recalculate all of the statistics on the other pages to match uh, your, the expectations of your workflow. So it's important to look at that and tune that. So we got a 78.7% uh, utilization uh, out of the four cores. It's not bad. Uh, I have not optimized this model at all. Uh, so it's running pretty decently right out of the box. Um, uh, probably where the unused uh, CPU time is due to TensorFlow startup, uh, which we'll see in a moment, and batch loading. Um, uh, right at the bottom too is there's a collection and platform info that will tell you exactly how everything was done. And there's also a collection log tab as well. So uh, the first uh, major uh, view next to the summary is the bottom up view. Um, this gives you the standard table of different functions and possibly uh, loops as well. You can choose to uh, look at only loops or functions and, functions and loops. The default is just functions. Um, I've sorted this by instructions retired. So the top uh, function here is the one that ran the most instructions or completed the most instructions. Uh, it might be a little hard to see, but it's a JIT AVX gem. And double clicking this would, would bring up a separate uh, tab that shows source and uh, assembly, which we'll see uh, briefly in a moment. And when I double click that, it's pretty, uh, it's apparent that this is an MKL function. So this is MKL's just-in-time compilation of a general uh, matrix multiplication for AVX. The uh, diagram on the right is the microarchitecture diagram with the stats and data uh, for that. This is specific to the selected function. Um, so, uh, the diagram shows uh, the green part is the pipelines uh, in the uh, CPUs, in the cores. Uh, above that in red, we see a front end bound section. There might be a memory bound section if it, uh, or, and a back end bound section and, and possibly other sections if there was significant use or there were significant stalls. In this case, our pipelines ran pretty well. Uh, we retired 81.2% of the instructions, which is pretty good, and we can see that 96.6% uh, of uh, the instructions in this function were floating point arithmetic and more specifically uh, vector floating point, which is good. Um, for the red, the, the front end bound, it looks like we 53.4% uh, of the retired instructions may have had issues, uh, probably mostly due to front end latency. So those are causing bubbles in the pipeline. Uh, at times. Um, so that's something that we could uh, consider looking at and possibly optimizing later on. Um, and other views would help uh, uh, tell us what was uh, at stake there. Um, another note is that anything that is highlighted in, uh, anything that is red, uh, you can actually hover over in VTune and VTune will give you an explanation as to what it thinks the problem is. Um, uh, and may suggest uh, more uh, views or collections that you can look at to uh, get more information about that. Now, it's an explanation only. VTune makes assumptions about how you're running and if your workflow uh, um, doesn't meet those assumptions, maybe these values are good. So for instance, for floating point arithmetic, we're using uh, AVX vector arithmetic here, but I think it, uh, as I recall when I hovered over it, it said you might wanna tune it for a higher level of AVX. Um, uh, one other note is that in the fourth place, there's also another uh, just-in-time EVX compilation for of a general matrix multiply. Uh, we'll see how that's important in a moment. Um, so that was the top of the bottom-up view. The bottom of the bottom-up view is a uh, representation of the CPU usage over the entire run. Um, and uh, you can, normally this displays threads. There are, uh, TensorFlow creates a lot of threads even if you tell it to only use a certain number of cores or a certain number of NMP threads. Thus, uh, you can select cores or processes to view. I've uh, 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 reduced this down to physical cores so it's a smaller view. And to see how uh, each of the cores was used uh, because I, I specified for OpenMP threads. 
You can use the plus and minus to zoom in and out. This is zoomed all the way out and we can see it's at the sec uh, resolution of seconds. Uh, you can get down to millisecond and microsecond and, and obviously the uh, usage graph gets uh, much more fine grained and uh, sometimes shows extra details. So what's interesting about this is we have uh, at the beginning, only one core is being used and it's only about 50% loaded. This is very likely the startup time for starting up Python, start uh, loading in the TensorFlow package and initializing it, and then uh, compiling the model. Um, once the model starts running, we start seeing on three cores, uh, peaks of 100% uh, usage or pretty much 100% usage, followed by troughs where there's little CPU usage. And there's a, uh, a wider distribution at the beginning and then it gets more packed as it runs. And uh, another a single core at the bottom is uh, kind of has almost an inverse of the top where uh, uh, when the, the top three uh, compute cores are uh, not being used, we see more usage on the uh, core one. So what I think is happening here is that one core is being used to do data management and data loading. And then the other three cores are being used to actually run the model. And uh, for the inference run, because MNIST is such a small data set, I did, I think I ran 10 times uh, over the MNIST data set to create an artificial load uh, that was long enough to run in VTune. And I suspect that cache effects, uh, uh, so at the beginning it takes a little while to read it all into cache. And then later on, it's all packed into cache and runs faster. Um, I'm going to just uh, talk about this briefly. This is the assembly view. Um, this is what happens when you double click on a function. You can also see a source view, but uh, I like to look at the assembly. And when you double click on it, it automatically has a highlighted line for the, the hottest uh, uh, assembly instruction in the stream. In this case, we can see it's a vector uh, flow uh, fuse multiply add running over YMM registers. So it's at least AVX instructions. Um, uh, and that's retired the most uh, instruction, the 806 million out of uh, all this code. Um, we're looking at clock ticks instructions retired in CPI rate and CPI rate looks pretty good, 0.4. Um, there's obviously a lot of other uh, fields as well. This is just reduced so I could fit it on the slide, but you can look at front end latency, bad speculation, other scheduling information. Because um, this is a short talk, I don't have time to show other collection types, but uh, VTune offers quite a few. The ones we tend to use are performance snapshot. <clears throat> so that's a, a, a new feature of uh, the, the new One API. Uh, it's been integrated into VTune. And when you take this collection, it runs faster than the others uh, and just gives you a display of all the collection types. And then highlighted in red are the ones that based on your run, V2 thinks will offer you more information on, uh, that will help you optimize. Um, hotspot collection is, uh, of course, a, a classic one that gives you a table of the, the hottest functions and loops. Uh, memory access can give you information, for instance, on if you have a NUMA architecture like a Skylake uh, Xeon um, that has uh, memory controllers uh, on each socket, um, it will tell you, for instance, the uh, amount of uh, traffic from uh, one socket's memory controller used by the other socket, et cetera. So that's useful to look for um, uh, uh, problems with uh, reading it from memory. Uh, HPC performance characterization uh, will give you uh, information uh, on uh, uh, the percentage flops, uh, what type of AVX or, or, or um, vector operations that you're using, et cetera. So we use that one quite a, a lot as well. Another thing you can do with VTune besides running over the entire executable is start your executable and then attach to it. So for instance, if we want to get rid of that um, overhead uh, from TensorFlow starting up, I could run the inference with Python directly and then find the process and connect to it once I saw that the inference was starting. Uh, I wanted to show an event count view, but there's not enough time. Uh, I have uh, one of the backup slides and this actually lets you see uh, the exact event counters from the CPU that are being used to calculate the various data um, and look at the counters themselves. So you can see counters for stalls uh, in various forms, et cetera. Um, if you uh, don't wanna use a GUI or can't, uh, uh, can't use the GUI, there is a reporting mechanism in VTune to create uh, reports in various formats. 
And then finally, when you run VTune from the command line, um, it runs in two phases. The first is collection, where it collects data from the running executable. Then after that's done, it does finalization, where it recalculates a bunch of data that it will show in the GUI. Um, and it does this uh, as part of the run. If you're running in a batch system and, and don't want to uh, take the hit for finalization in the batch system, because it can be quite long, you can defer it, and then it will run in the GUI when the VTune file is open. So quickly, correlating with TensorBoard, I'm not going to talk too much about TensorBoard because there's a, a, a lot of good uh, information online. But uh, let's look at uh, both the graphs and the profile uh, view that are um, offered uh, for inference runs. For uh, training runs, the graph view will show uh, uh, more information for uh, hyperparameter optimization stuff. But for uh, inference, basically you get a view of the model uh, in, in graphical form, uh, which is nice because you define the model uh, as part of Python, but some of us like uh, to look at it in graph form. Uh, it's a little easier. It's, these boxes are a little bit small. I apologize for that, but it's what uh, is offered by TensorBoard. It's a little hard to read. The round rec boxes are actually logical operations, and these can be uh, expanded recursively until you get to ovals, which are the actual TensorFlow ops that are used. And I've highlighted one here. It's probably hard to see, uh, but that highlight uh, brings up a box in the upper right corner. So you can see that I've expanded one of the dense layers inside that is a matmul logical operation, and that's implemented with a read variable uh, logical operation and a matmul uh, TensorFlow operation. We'll see uh, more on that in a moment. Um, the other thing you can do with this view that's very useful is uh, do heat map views uh, for compute time and memory usage where it will color each of the logical and uh, TensorFlow operations um, more intensely for those that take more compute time or more memory usage. So that's quite useful. Uh, for the profiling, um, uh, what I'll show is the new, uh, a new view in TensorFlow 2.x, which is quite useful. There's also a timeline which I have an example of in the backup, um, much like the CPU timeline we saw, it gives a timeline of all the TensorFlow ops that were run in order. Um, so this uh, stats view gives you both pie charts and a uh, uh, table of the TensorFlow ops, uh, and you can easily see which ones uh, ran the most uh, in either the pie chart or the, the um, the table view. If we look at the table, we can see that MKL fused MATMAL uh, appeared in the first and the fourth place for, uh, first place was for a ReLU and fourth place for a bias add. Um, what I think is happening here is that these are uh, corresponding to the uh, JIT AVX gem uh, functions that we saw taking up the most time in the hardware view. So. VTune can show uh, at the hardware level uh, sort of um, what we can see at the TensorFlow ops level is happening as well. And it, one thing I'll note is it's useful to use a mini workflow like I've done uh, a simple uh, model uh, so that uh, it's uh, with fewer operations, it's a little easier to correlate what you're seeing with TensorFlow ops to the actual uh, hardware. And then you can, based on what you learn, you can ex uh, extrapolate that to larger models that you actually run on. Two minutes. Okay, uh, I'm about to wrap up. So going further, um, uh, I've included some links for the VTune profiler. The first one is where you actually get the one API distribution, so you can get the base kit link uh, there. Uh, TensorFlow, uh, here are some to, uh, the to general tutorial page with excellent tutorials. And then the second one is the uh, Keras classification model I used uh, for the models that I created. I made a few changes for uh, data loading, but uh, essentially it's the same. And then TensorBoard has an excellent page with links to tutor tutorials and videos. TensorBoard uh, with the Keras Eager model sometimes is unable to display the uh, graph in certain situations and it pops up this link uh, to a GitHub bug. Uh, there's a robust discussion there um, if you are having problems. It has workarounds. Uh, some more articles uh, for um, that explain uh, how to maximize my uh, TensorFlow performance at Intel CPUs. Uh, a whole nother talk I could do is VTuna with MPI for distributed runs for something like Horovods. There are some articles there that explain that. Um, Intel uh, went in and optimized TensorFlow for CPU at one point, and this explains how it was done with uh, MKL and MKL DNN, uh, which I think are called one MKL and one DNN now. And then finally, if you want to build TensorFlow from source, 
here are the instructions. And uh, what I wanted to note is the MKL build is a configuration option. So you can build with MKL fairly easily. And if you want to tune for a specific uh, processor, like if you have a Skylake Xeon that has AVX512, um, you can specify that with the MArch flag in the build. So uh, summarizing, um, uh, TensorFlow is uh, sort of the standard, one of the standard uh, work, uh, frameworks we use. TensorBoard is the profiling tool, but these work at the uh, TensorFlow models and the TF ops level generally for CPU. Uh, we can add in VTune to see how the model is running on CPU hardware, specifically how the kernels which implement the TF ops and the TensorFlow models are running. <clears throat> and then, uh, as I've showed, both profiling types can be easily collected together in a single run, so you can correlate between uh, the two styles of uh, profiling. And of course, VTune has many more rich capabilities, and I, uh, I suggest uh, uh, to go try them out. Uh, there's so much I haven't been able to show and so many other things you can learn from it. And hopefully, uh, the, the short scripts and the mini workflow I've presented here will help you out with that. Thank you very much. And if there are any questions, uh, I'll take them or I'll be monitoring the Slack channel uh, 